Welcome to another episode of the KNA Football Podcast. We are almost three weeks done now with the NFL season. We have a lot to recap. Looking forward to it. There was a lot of action this weekend. Looking forward to it. Uh, if you missed anything of the games this weekend, we're here to recap for you and make sure that you're all caught up to speed going into next week. This is KNA Football. All right, so Austin, we are three weeks, almost done now mm-hmm. with the season. It's been a crazy season so far. There's been so much just action and upsets and just madness. Yeah. So, I mean, anything you want to say before we just jump into the recaps? I mean, for sure, a bunch of madness, especially in week two. Week two is crazy. Week three, there were certainly some unexpected uh wins from some teams which we'll see in a minute but you know it doesn't look like the nfl is slowing down i saw a uh, statistic that the under for all the bets in the nfl the under has hit more times than the over which is the first time in nfl history really that has ever happened so it's an interesting set just kind of shows how crazy the year's been so far yeah the offense is all for every team all year it's been really sluggish for most teams yeah. it's been a lot, a lot of defense and a lot of struggling offenses and quarterbacks and there's been a unfortunate amount of injuries and i feel like there was a lot yeah. yesterday in the that's games, for sure but. yeah so let's jump into it we can get into some of that yes yeah, so debbie are you able to pull up the slideshow again shout out to harold shout out to harold mansfield all right so we already talked about this game on saturday in the last episode so we can jump past that one debbie no one wants to hear me talk about the browns again <laughs> Except right. for maybe Browns fans. If Browns fans want to hear me talk about it all day. <laughs> Get the comments going for a separate podcast where I just talk about the Browns for three hours. We can get that one going if it gets enough love. Okay, Bengals, Jets. The Bengals finally look like a competent football team, which is sad to say because they played the Jets. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jets. Jets is the Jets. Jets is the Jets. You know... They pulled off the win last week, kind of a miracle for them. A yeah. lot would say a fluke. Hurts. Most would say fluke. I think <laughs> it kind of was a fluke. And the Jets showed that they're just the Jets, and Joe Flacco is just a backup quarterback. The Bengals started to look like a team again. They got it all back going. They pretty soundly won this one. Yeah. Not much to say. I mean, Joe Burrow looked great. The Bengals' offensive line still is atrocious like they need to fix that or they're never going to do anything yeah i can i still cannot believe that they allegedly spent 70 million dollars on a revolving door <laughs> like that's that's what their offensive line is they just let the defense in it's every play it's awful like they one of their superstar quote unquote superstar big name free agency signings was their right tackle lay Le- collins mm-hmm. i think that's how you pronounce his first name and when he came in he was talking to joe burrow and like on an interview he said like Oh, I hope you like your new bodyguard. I mean, that's a pretty bad bodyguard. That's pretty bad bodyguard. Don't, don't let him into the secret service, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. But hopefully the Bengals are able to just like fix that problem. Because aside from that, they're, I mean, no real, no real holes on that roster. I mean, Yeah, they're good other than the offensive line. Yeah. So you need to fix that, Cincy. Yeah. All right. Next game. Panthers, Saints. Panthers, Saints. I... You know the Panthers won, and I am happy when you go into school on Monday and you're sitting in your first period class and you're sitting next to someone who you barely know. Like you met him this year at school and you talk to him like every now and then in, in class. And you know the Panthers won when you're sitting there and the person turns to you and says, You were in a really good mood today. And I was like, That's right. And I was like, The Panthers finally won. So, I mean, so excited that they won. I thought they were going to go winless. I mean, I, I was shocked. And of all things, I picked this game. And of all things, it was against the Saints, which is the Could worst. not make Caden happier. Literally, oh my goodness. Fun fact, uh, prayers and well wishes to that child. He is still recovering in the counselor's office uh, in the fetal position going, the Panthers, not the Panthers. Because Caden talked to him for seven hours about the Panthers. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> no, I uh, we had, we had a little bit of work to do in that class, and then I like switched my tab, and I just started watching the highlights, and I was like, mm. <laughs> "But Matt Rule, take note, Mrs. Summers, he is not paying attention." <laughs> <laughs> Matt Rule looked like a competent coach, you know. 
after two games, he finally is like, you know what? Let's put in LaVisca Chenault. Like, we traded all this. Not all this. We traded for him, you know. He's a decent player. Let's put him in. In a big spot in the game. They bring him in. His very first play. He catches a little slant. Takes it 76. Not 76. 67 yards to the house for a huge touchdown. And you're like, oh, wow, maybe that's what happens when you, when you put in other receivers instead of the same 11 guys the whole game. And so then, later in the game, it's third and 15, and they're like, let's do it again. Let's put in the Vizca Chanel again, because this is super good. They put him in, 23-yard gain. And at the end of the game, Matt Rule was being interviewed, and they're like, hey. And Matt Rule's like, hey, Matt, uh, LaVisca Chanel, he's going to see expanded work. I mean, I would hope so after that game. but Good job, Matt Rule, for learning how to coach. Yeah. The Panthers' defense looks great. The offense really struggles, everyone but McCaffrey. So they got to work yeah. on that. But well, couldn't be happier. Yeah. Well, good, good job, Panthers, in your first win of the season. <laughs> there might not be many. All right, Lions, Vikings. Um, I believe the Vikings won this one. They did. I don't know why I'm not Unf- confident about no, that. No, they did. It was. It was. It was. It came down to the end. So the Lions had it for a majority of the game, but the Vikings kept it close, and then the Lions. It seems like their issue ever since Dan Campbell got there has been sustaining leads towards like the variant, like the one possession losses has been the Lions thing the last two years. Yeah. And the Vikings went down the field and scored with like 40 seconds to go to win the game, which was really unfortunate. I really thought the Lions were going to pull it off, which I was, I was pulling for them. But I mean, Dan Campbell, his thing has been one score losses, but compared to the Lions the past like, 10 years, yeah. their thing was getting blown out in the game being over by the first quarter. So, so one score losses isn't as bad. Right. They can, you can live it. with that. That's fixable. Right. But uh, Amon Ross St. Brown looks great for the Lions. Yeah, for real. He looks like a superstar. DeAndre Swift is still good. Both of them had uh, minor injuries and missed a little bit of the game, but they came back in, but sucks. But Jared yeah. Goff is looking like a decent, I mean, he's not great, but he's looking like a sustainable quarterback for the Lions and Dalvin Cook still are all right I mean he's still pretty good running back but Justin Jefferson's been really struggling the last two weeks he is like he had like two catches yesterday yeah for sure they need to <laughs> fix that for sure well yeah Vikings win not much to be said about that game it was close it was, it was, a, fun, it was a good game yeah it was back and forth the whole time yeah Debbie I do not understand this game. No, neither I do I. I don't understand how this happened. The Chiefs and the Colts. Chiefs, Colts. Um, flashback to our pickums for this week, and we had said there was no way. I think your your actual quote was. <laughs> we don't quote, need. We don't need to talk about that. We don't need to talk about that. The Colts will get steamrolled. There's no way they win this game. The Colts proceeded to win this game. It was madness. Incredible. I don't understand. That's, it. that's what the NFL is this season. Yeah. The Colts looked like the team that we thought they were going to be. I don't know where they were the first two weeks. Yeah. I think they were still thought they were in the offseason. But now they finally got to the NFL. Here they are. And they beat Kansas City, which nobody saw coming. Right. They had Romo and... Uh, who's Romo's partner? I don't know. Like they had the best announcing yeah. team calling this game. Because before the season started, they, they assigned them this game. They're like, this is going to be a big game. Like Give the best announcers these guys. And then... I'm sure the NFL, once it got to this week, they're like, oh, man, oh we my, up. we messed up. We should have given this to like the Bills Dolphins. Like, this is going to be a blowout. And then <laughs> ended up being a great game, and the Colts yeah. ended up winning at the very end. But the Chiefs, I really don't understand their offensive coordinator. Going down second half, there was like 30 yeah. seconds to go, and they were at their own 40. Like, could have gone down and at least tried to kick a field goal. I mean, they got Mahomes. They can easily go do that. And he goes, and he wouldn't call play for them. He's like, no. Like, they took it into the locker room. And then Mahomes went on the sideline. He started yelling, and they started yelling back and forth. But it yeah. doesn't make sense. If Andy you have Reed, Mahomes... Yeah, Andy Reid had to come in and yeah. separate that fight. You know who wins that fight? Mahomes. <laughs> Mahomes wins that fight. Offensive coordinator gone tomorrow. Seriously. Mahomes wants it. Like, and even though the offensive coordinator was like, no. Like, I feel like Mahomes has enough power to be like, we're running a play. Right. Like, he what just, are gonna, he what just are, stays on the field with his offense and calls his own play. What are they going to do? Cut Mahomes? Like... Yeah, no, they're not. He said. <laughs> but, I mean, Colts looked like the team we expected them to be. Hopefully, this is like the turning point for them and they can start p- picking it up and yeah. playing like they were supposed to. But, I mean, it looked like two pretty dominant teams going at it. It was, it was a lot of fun to watch. Colts for took sure. the lead with like 40 seconds to go and yeah, the defense held them. It's incredible. Yeah. Bills, Dolphins. Uh, this was an interesting game. Um, bunch of players got hurt, went down with 
heat stroke Stefan Diggs. Yeah, it was yeah, it was most, most notably. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so the Dolphins ended up winning this one, Which, but in an in interesting fashion. Debbie, go ahead and pull up the... Uh, well, before we do that, me and Austin, you know, the geniuses that we are said early in the year, the, uh, if there's one team to go undefeated this year, it's the Bills. And we're not saying it's going to... Not that one, Debbie. Oh, yeah. We said not, not that one either. No, Next one. That one. No. Yeah, yeah this that. is the one. But um, <laughs> we said if there's one team to go undefeated this year, it's the Bills. Yeah. And then... What do they do? They proceed to lose. I mean, it was it's not like they like aren't good. They're the best team in the league. Still. Yeah. It was a great game by the Dolphins. It was a great game by the Bills. It was just Dolphins played better and yeah, and in the end that's what happens. Right. Tua did get knocked out of this game and he he got hit hard, kind of like cheap shot. Yeah. And then he got up. He tried to walk back to the huddle and he just <laughs> like back boom, over. collapsed to yeah. the ground. His teammates helped him up and then he fell again and they're like, "Oh my." So they took him out and he was like everyone's like, "Oh, like he is a concussion. He's he's, he's definitely not coming back. Literally a drive later, Tua comes right back onto the field. And then like that last night, uh, the NFL was investigating the Dolphins for bringing him back onto the field because yeah, clearly more, he was not all right. More legal troubles for the Dolphins ahead after what they've already been through. I don't understand. Like I saw this thing and it was like the do- the doctor that cleared Tua and it was like some dude that was like cross eyed and like <laughs> obviously it was like. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> I really want to know how that's going to sound on the podcast. Yeah, it's going to sound <laughs> terrible. You're going to sound like a terrible person. Okay, so Flash 2, Thanksgiving Day, 2012. Run it. You got to hit play. <laughs> you got to hit play, Debbie. You're the tech, tech guru. Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez. <laughs> boom. Butt fumble. Okay. Iconic Return. play. Iconic. Everyone knows this play. Literally the most, like, what's the word? Bad. It's famous, but for a bad reason. Infamous. Infamous. Yeah, the most infamous play in NFL <laughs> yeah, it's history. Horrible. You terrible. Know. Okay. Flash to yesterday. Flash to yesterday, which will become the next most infamous play. Run that. The next most infamous play. <laughs> on the one yard line. Dolphin, Dolphin, wait, wait, can you pause it real quick? We'll give some insight to what's going on here. So, Dolphins are up by four. They're punting with a minute to go at their own, like, that's the one. Yeah, they're they're on one. Their own one. They need to pin the Bills back to keep them from getting good field position and going down the score. All right, so they punt. You can play it now. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie's really Five, good. Yeah. All right, there we go. Okay, here we go. The punt. Boom. Kicks it <laughs> into his blocker. <laughs> right into his butt. Out of bounds, a safety. Which is now called the butt punt. The butt punt. So we so got we the, the butt, butt fumble. Right, butt fumble back in 2012, Thanksgiving Day. And now... We have the uh, butt punt, um, September twenty fifth, two thousand twenty two. Thankfully for the Dolphins, didn't didn't uh, cost them any. I mean, yeah, it didn't, didn't cost, cost them, them the win. The they still their defense made some great plays and won them the game. Which, yeah. speaking of, what the final play of the game? We have a video of that, yeah, right? Final play of the game. We can show that one real quick. A little off me, not Austin and I were. Uh, no, it was that one. This one. Austin and I were arguing about this earlier. So, Austin, yeah. you can talk, I guess. Okay, so here we have 18 seconds left to go. Second and 20. Bills have the ball. Um, they obviously need to get in field goal range. They're at the uh, 40... Looks like the 48. They're on yeah. 48. <laughs> so, go ahead and run that. So, the Bills snap the ball. Josh Allen evades the sack. <laughs> Throws. Sound like an announcer. Uh, whoever number six is. <laughs> to me, to me, okay. You can see that he's two yards shy of the field goal line, like where they need to be to get the field goal. He's um, more than two yards. Okay, watch this again. When he gets tackled, he's, he's like six yards away from the field goal. Oh, line. Uh, when he gets tackled. Okay. Yeah, when he gets okay, tackled, okay. he's like two yards away. In my opinion, looking at this, okay, then the Bills, you know, they scramble, they need to snap the ball because they don't have any timeouts, and then time expires. They didn't get the playoff. They didn't get the playoff, and the Dolphins win. In my opinion, whoever number six was, I don't know his <laughs> Isaiah, name. McKen- Isaiah McKenzie. Okay, He's Isaiah a pretty McKenzie. well-known player. I, I don't mean. know why I don't know him. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Isaiah McKenzie, he doesn't get out of bounds, which I think he should have. I understand, like, Caden, you were saying that he needs to get to field goal range for them to kick the field goal, win the game. To me, it looked like he turned upfield to try to get there instead of running out of bounds to stop the clock, which is what I think the smart move is because the field goal line, you can kick from outside the field goal line. Like You don't need to be there. You have you pay a kicker for a reason, and hopefully that's to hit field goals. Wait, you also have 11 seconds. Yeah, you have a, so what, you have 11 seconds on the clock, Sue Ellen? 
Yeah, but clearly they can't run another play because they need to scramble back and try to spike the no, ball. No, you're you're you are right. Of like, yes, the, he he should have got out. But but look right here, if he kept going straight, he would have gotten tackled. And the like he, the guy the guy dove at his legs right as he cut up field. So if he would have kept going straight, he still would have got cut in the legs and fell. He would have been tackled and no, He tried he to turn upfield. I think he needs to run for the sideline, even if he doesn't get it. It's a valiant effort. He doesn't even okay, try. He tries to so cut So what if field. it's a valiant effort? You still lost the game. It's the same outcome. He couldn't have... If, no, he, went straight, nah. if he went straight okay. towards the sideline, he still would have got tackled in bounds. And he couldn't have turned because if you run backwards to the sideline, like run out of bounds while going backwards, the clock doesn't stop. Right. This happened last year. You have year. to go forward. Yeah, you have to be going forwards or sideways. And he tried to go sideways, but he would have got cut off, so he just cut up field to get yards. And then they didn't get a playoff. No matter what happened, he wasn't going to get a playoff. I think he should have gone out of bounds. It was, good, it was but, played really good by the Dolphins defense. Right. Either way, congratulations to the Dolphins on the win. They are now the only undefeated team. No, the Eagles. Them and the well, Eagles. No, they're the only undefeated team in the AFC. Oh, my bad. The NFC still has the Eagles and Giants. Correct. And maybe Austin will finally start yeah, giving some you know respect what? to the Dolphins. The Dolphins have earned my respect. You know, I'm gonna start every single them. week he's been like, one more week, I'm not going to pick the Dolphins. Three weeks. One more break, I'm not going to pick the Dolphins. Finally... They beat the Bills. Hopefully, you guys give them some respect. I mean, I mean they got well, a really big I'll, game I'll on give, Thursday. I'll give the Heat the most uh, credit for this win for the Dolphins. We, we will be picking that game later tonight, or later this episode, because they play on Thursday. So It's true. Okay, Raiders, Titans. Uh, the Titans somehow rallied to a victory. I don't understand how they did, but they somehow managed to do it, and now the Raiders are the only 0-3 only team. team. They are the only winless team, which is incredible. The AFC West has not shown up this year no. like we thought they would. They are a mid division. <laughs> mid. Really thought they would be insane, but they're not. I don't get it. No. You know, I think this really shows that coaching is huge. Josh yeah. McDaniels, he's been a coach before. It didn't work out. So he went back to New England. Now he has another opportunity with an amazing roster. And now they're the only 0 3 team in the league. He's got incredible yeah. weapons. He's got a good quarterback, a great defense. And they can't figure it out. And all winnable games. Like the Titans, Derrick Henry finally, I mean, give props to where props is do. That's a saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Derrick Henry, he had a great game. He surely became the old Derrick Henry and played amazing. But the Raiders just, they can't get it going. And it hurts because I really was high on them this year. Yeah. And they've same. been horrible. Yeah. So hopefully they figure it out. But they are the first team since 2012 to make the playoffs the year before and then go 0-3. The last team to do that was the 2012 Texans. Bad luck. How do you get Devonta Adams and get worse? It doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. sense. You know, it has to be coaching. Like, like we said, we said this last episode, good coaches make bad teams respectable, but bad coaches make good teams bad. And yeah. Josh McDaniels is clearly a bad coach. Clearly. All right, Ravens, New England. Um, the Ravens literally ran all over New England. <laughs> yeah. Um, the New England could not hold on to the ball. No. Uh, they kept fumbling it away. They kept throwing picks. Uh, there was the one play that I think Red Zone chose as their like most clutch play of the day, which was uh, New England catches you the ball. You watched Red Zone? There was like a free trial going on on Hulu, and so I watched it. <laughs> yeah. You watched- it was actually really awesome. It's amazing. It's, it's really great. Come over to my house. I'll, yeah, I'll come over to your house. I'll bring my school with me because I do school while I watch the games. <laughs> but anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, my picks are back. I'm doing school instead of watching the games. <laughs> we'll we'll get to how my bad my picks are doing so far. But um, New England catches the ball, horse fumble, Ravens pick it up, and that basically ends the game. There's like a minute left. Ravens are up by like I don't know a score and a half. Um, so that was the end of it. Ravens ended up winning it. Um, you know. Props to Lamar again, showing why he should be paid, uh, why he feels he should be the highest paid quarterback in the league. And I'm sure at the end of this season, someone will pick him up, if not the Ravens. Right. Someone's willing to pay him. You know, I got to I gotta say, I expected the Patriots to be horrible this season. I've said it. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, I, they're not a good team. But in every game, they've been in it. They, it's been a one-possession game. Like They beat the Steelers last week. Steelers aren't good, but they beat the Steelers. I thought they were going to get blown out in this game, and they made it a game, brought it down to the last possession, and against Miami, who's a really good team, clearly, made it a close game against Miami. So they might not be getting the wins, but they're making it good games with the little roster that they have. But uh, I think the big storyline in this game is 
Mac Jones has a high ankle sprain. Yeah. Suffered at the very end of the game. He's going to be missing a couple weeks. Yeah, very unfortunate for him. He obviously had that, um, what they thought was like a back sprain earlier this season. It turned out to be nothing, and he ended up playing. Yeah. And now he sprained his ankle pretty severely, so he's out for a couple weeks now. What the crazy thing, every single week there's been a big-name quarterback to get injured and miss a decent amount of time. Week one, Dak Prescott. Yeah. Week two, Trey Lance, out for the year. And now Mac Jones is going to be missing some time. So who's up next? Quarterbacks better who's be a little, 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 be a little, be a little weary. Be a little Man, I got my money on Joe Burrow. That's what I was just about to say. I was say, I bet you Joe Burrow is going to get hurt next with his awful offensive line. But I mean, hopefully not. Hopefully no injuries. Yeah, hopefully not. We don't wish that upon anyone. No, that's awful. Even if it's your rival. Exactly. All right, Eagles football team. Eagles won this one. Killed them. Yeah, they absolutely <laughs> killed him. It was literally 24 nothing, 99% of the game. And then late in the fourth quarter, Washington got a safety to get him on yeah. the board. And then they scored a meaningless touchdown with like a minute to go. Jalen yeah. Hurts. Jalen Hurts balling for fantasy teams. Ah. Like Debbie's team. Yeah. Pretty psyched Debbie about that. Debbie finally put Jalen Hurts in instead of Aaron oh, Rodgers. That was one time. I've had All right, minutes. five. You know, Debbie, yes. Debbie doesn't know much about football. Yeah, like, didn't know anything going into the season. Yeah, and then today... Debbie winning in her um, it's his. Everyone knows Debbie's a dude. Yeah. Debbie won in his fan. <laughs> Debbie won in his fantasy game. So he texted all of us and he goes, "Hey, I, and he goes, one. he's one and one." Well, no, there's three games now. It's been three this games, is three weeks. Well, after today, you'll be two and one. You'll be two and one. Yeah, two and so, one. Yeah, going into this year, he knew nothing, and now he just texts us and he goes, "Hey," and he screenshot and he goes, "Debbie didn't know anything going into the year." <laughs> You guys better be proud of me because I'm two and one. So, I mean, props to we Debbie. That's very pretty, proud of Debbie. This podcast is helping Debbie learn. For sure, for sure. But the Eagles defense, back to what we were talking about, <laughs> looks phenomenal along with their offense. Yeah. They're, they look like a good team. They look like a great team. I don't think Fantastic. many teams in the NFC can compete with them at all. Their defense is like out of this world. Carson Wentz has looked amazing against every team up until now. He yeah. looks like absolute garbage. They're, they're, uh, the Eagles defensive line got literally nine sacks. Like the Eagles um, YouTube page, yeah. YouTube account, they made a, a compilation of all the sacks and it was a two and a half minute long video. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Like I feel bad for Carson Wentz. <laughs> Eagles defense is phenomenal. Their offense is even better. Yeah. I, out of the three teams left that are undefeated, I think the Eagles remain undefeated the longest. Hot take. No, I mean, not really hot. Not really I, hot. I, I, I kind it's, of agree with It's you. a warm take. It's between them and the Dolphins, obviously. <laughs> the Giants. The Eagles I mean, well, the Giants won't remain. <laughs> they might not even win tonight. <laughs> Texans, Bears. Justin Fields. Justin Fields. <laughs> Didn't look good at all. No, but they won. Yeah, I mean, that's what matters in football. It doesn't matter your stats, but. Yeah, winning's what matters. I'm the hugest Justin Fields supporter. Biggest. <laughs> hugest. <laughs> Hayden is the hugest Justin Fields supporter. I'm the hugest I'm supporter stick with of you Justin on that Fields. One. But he did look very bad yesterday. He fumbled twice. He threw two interceptions. But they won. So I think the Bears are the worst two and one team in NFL <laughs> history. Hey, as long as the wins keep ticking up, it's all that matters. Your coach will stay. The quarterback won't get fired. It's what matters as long as you keep winning games. Yeah, we said this was going to be a snooze fest on Friday, but it ended up being a really good game. Bears won off of a last second field goal. Yeah, they made a great interception with like forty seconds to go to send them down to field goal range, and then they kicked the game winner. So, I mean, I was happy. I love Justin Fields. I was glad he got the win. And the Texans are still winless, but they got the tie, so they're not a win. They're not zero three. three. But good job, Raiders. <laughs> good job, Raiders. What the heck was this game? <laughs> if you thought the Colts game was crazy, this game was one for the ages. The Chargers got. Curb stomped Dude, by the Jaguars. It was wild. The Jags and the Chargers. So I was so high on the Chargers going into the season. I still think they're going to be great. I mean, it's only week three. I don't know what's going on behind the desk right I now. Know, there's, there's like, like a whole, <laughs> whole shuffle. <laughs> Debbie just handed it off the mic, but or the, the headset. headset. But the Jags look for real. Like, they played amazing. The Chargers have a great yeah. defense, and they put up 38 points on them. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. I don't understand how they did it, but they looked so good. Doug Peterson looked like a phenomenal coach. Back to what I was saying earlier. Good coaches are the difference. Last year, the Jags looked horrible. 
Yeah. Absolutely horrible with Urban Meyer. They bring in Doug Peterson. They're two and one, and they're winning, winning, winning the AFC South right now. At yeah. two and one. You know, he's tied with his win yesterday. He tied Urban Meyer to the mo- or the fifth most wins in Jaguars history. That's so sad. That is so sad. But if you think about it, the Jags are a very new team. Right. They're, they've been an expansion team. So they and are they've new. been so bad, like pretty they've much their whole As expansion teams tend to do. But, you know, good job to Jacksonville. Good job, Doug Peterson. They look for real. You guys did really well. Um, I'm sorry, Chargers. But, you know, you know, sometimes that happens. They were dealing with a crazy amount of injuries that That's happened true. before the game and during the game. Yep. Keenan Allen didn't play. Right. Justin Herbert was dealing with his rib injury, which clearly affected him. I don't think yeah. he plays as bad as he do, does if he's fully healthy. Like, clearly the ribs were affecting the game. Do they win? Maybe not, but he plays better than he did. Right. And then their left tackle, their superstar left tackle, Rashawn Slater, is out for the year now with right. a... I don't know what the injury was, but he's out for the year. And then Joey Bosa got hurt, and he's out yeah. for... A couple weeks now so their their team is just falling apart injury by injury so hopefully they're yeah. able to figure it out i'm i mean i take them to go to the super bowl i love right. justin herbert i think they'll be okay but thankfully for them the afc west has not been as dominant as advertised to be so they're right. still in it i mean they'll be in it no matter what but yeah all right rams uh cardinals uh the cardinals almost pulled off another <laughs> comeback which would have been crazy yeah i was getting my speech ready for to liken the uh, Cardinals to the uh, 2012 Denver Broncos, was it 2012 Denver Broncos with uh, Tim T- Tim Tebow, with all their crazy comeback wins that no, they would I pull don't off. Know. But I was getting ready to liken them to Denver Broncos when they had Tim Tebow, but then they couldn't pull it off, and the Rams ended up winning. Yeah, I was really hoping for them to pull it off. You know, when they were down like 11 or so with a couple minutes to mm-hmm. go, I was like, they're gonna pull this off. And my dad looks at me because me and my brother we had picked up dinner, and my dad looks at me. He goes. If the Cardinals win this game, I will pay you. Like, I'll pay you for your dinner. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I stood up and I was like, come on, Cardinals. But they weren't able to pull it off. So, very sad. Caden had to pay for his own dinner. <laughs> I mean, I, I planned on it. But, yeah. Um, Rams, I mean, they're doing what they need to to win. They're not looking dominant, dominant. But right. they're winning the game. As dominant as they should for a right, former, right, right. for winning the Super Bowl last year. But, as long, again, as long as you keep the wins calm, ticking up. That's what matters. As long as you make it to the playoffs, the only thing that matters are the playoffs. Right. Wins are what matter. It doesn't matter how you win. It matters, it matters that you win. That you win. Right. right. And, I mean, the Cardinals, they're not expected to be great right now without... I mean, they're, expect, they're good. A good team. Yeah. But they're missing DeAndre Hopkins, who's their superstar receiver. He's right. going to come back week seven. So, if they can just keep it sustainable until he gets back, I'm sure that they'll be fine. Right. Green Bay, Tampa Bay. Boring game. Very boring. Tampa Bay has literally zero offense. Um, Their offense is horrible. It's so bad. I don't understand what happened. Tom Brady should have stayed retired Dude. if he wanted to keep his dignity. Um, I'm about half a millimeter away from dropping Leonard Fournette in my fantasy because he keeps on putting up zero points. <laughs> oh, week. don't worry. You still beat me by point four. Because hey, we're, we're the getting there. We're, hold on, hold on. We're getting there. We're getting there. Don't even talk to me. We're getting there. Okay. And then Green Bay ended up winning. Good job. Aaron Rodgers, I need to put in Alan Lazard. He's finally proven himself as a player that I should put in <laughs> as at least a flex. So, uh, good job, Packers. Very boring game. Low scoring. It was like 14 to, whatever, 10? Yeah, 12? no, 14, 14 to 12. 12. Yeah, they missed the two-point. They missed the two-point conversion. Because of a delay game, which is crazy. Yeah, so crazy. Tom Brady, as experienced as he is to get a delay <laughs> of game penalty. Well, he was, he was clapping. He wanted I mean, that yeah, ball he bad, and the it. center just didn't snap. I don't think that was on Tom Brady. It wasn't on Tom Brady, but the offense in general needs to step it up. They've put up so little points in the last three weeks. Seriously, their defense has had to fest. carry them in their games. Yeah. The Packers' defense has been phenomenal. Yeah. And they've won games. Normally, like the Packers for years, it's just been Aaron Rodgers like going crazy. And now they're playing run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Defense, defense, defense. And it's working. Their running game yeah. is incredible now, and their defense is phenomenal. So, Well, they don't have any receivers, so they have to rely on the run game. And they have probably the second best running back duo in football right. in uh, A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. And their defense goes crazy. So good job, Packers, for pulling off the wins. Yeah. I mean, Bucks, guy, Bucks fans might be a little concerned. I mean, their offense has not looked good. I'd be very concerned. I mean, they didn't have Mike Evans. Or Godwin. Or Godwin, which is, you know, a problem. But still, 
Injuries are probably football. You gotta, I mean, gotta learn to overcome. Get some less injury upon players. Facts. <laughs> yeah, we can skip that. No, so. we can't. <laughs> Real quick. Um, Falcons, Seahawks. It was a good game. It was high scoring. A lot of points. Back and forth. Seahawks lost. Seahawks lost. Yes. Yeah. Falcons got the win. So they are now, they're not winless anymore. You know, Smith played really good, but just not good enough to win. Yeah. I mean, that's really all it is. There wasn't much in this game, but it was just a lot of points. This is the game that got me I'm gonna leave not now. one, but two Thanks fantasy Thanks for listening wins. to the k Football Podcast. <laughs> no, stick around, stick around. <laughs> okay, I got a little story. I know that we're a little over time, and Debbie's shooting us uh, yeah, Debbie is hateful, literally just hateful looks. Perfect. Sue Ellen's also being mean. But <laughs> this, this game ended up getting me not one, but two fantasy wins. Going in to the... Uh, Late night Sunday game, uh, I was ahead in not one but two leagues. I was ahead one twenty six point six six to one hundred. You know the exact score, one, you one loser. One eighteen oh my gosh. point six eight to Caden. Okay, <laughs> he was winning by ten. I was winning by ten. And then in another league, I was up one hundred and twenty to one hundred and seventeen. Okay, I had zero players playing both leagues. For the Sunday night game. And the person I was playing in both leagues had two players playing in the Sunday night game. And thanks to neither team having any offense and being just the most boring Sunday night game of all time. They couldn't have picked a more boring game on a Sunday night in NFL history. I beat Caden by .40 points. You know, Nathaniel Hackett... Has a great running back in his disposal. A great young running back. Go ahead, say his name. What's his name? John. Jonathan. Javante Williams. Javante Williams. <laughs> okay? Like, you got a great points. superstar young running back. Okay? You're wasting his youth. <laughs> He's going to get old. Give him the ball. Nathaniel Hackett. Please send this to Nathaniel Hackett, okay? You have two running backs on your team Javante Williams, powerful runner. Fast runner, young, superstar, potential, like soon to be a superstar. Then you got Melvin Gordon, who's like 75. <laughs> and you give it to Melvin Gordon 99% of the time and never give it to Javante Williams. You're in the goal line and you give it to Melvin Gordon. Why not give it to the dude who can break 45 tackles? You're just salty because you, you're know, salty because you had him you and know, he got zero points. Good coaches, the, the, the storyline of today, good coaches. Bad coaches. Nathaniel Hackett, horrible coach. You also have a good young tight end in Albert Ooga Wooga 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 Wooga. <laughs> and you don't throw it to him. He got me two points. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Russell Wilson stole the Broncos from $250 million. He robbed them. Yeah, he should be to jail for robbing them. And Nathaniel Hackett should go to jail for screwing my fantasy team. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> okay, that's it. This is the worst Sunday night game ever. Like the game itself, not just fantasy purposes. That was a boring game. Hold on, jump, jump back real quick. Horrible game. Horrible game. Jump back to the other game, real soon. We have a clip to show. Oh, um, right, I forgot about that. Right, Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> just showing the amazingness of this game. Yeah, fantastic. Let's show this game. So, 49ers are on the two. Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> goes back to pass, steps out of the back of the end zone, safety, throws an interception, pick six. <laughs> But wait, no, because Jimmy Garoppolo decided to step out of the back of the end zone right onto the end racism uh, <laughs> plaster on the back. I saw this thing. It was like, Jimmy Garoppolo, he's putting his foot down on racism. Go, Good Jimmy job, Garoppolo. Jimmy but yeah, he steps out of the back of the end zone, safety, which ends up being a blessing for the 49ers. Still lost the game. They still lost the game, but it saved him a pick six, which likened it to uh, Dan Orlovsky. Orlovsky. Go ahead and show uh, that clip to Owen. Yeah, so this was a, this was a couple years ago. ago. Six years ago, I think. Six? Was it more than six? I mean, dude. We can find the clip. Keep going. There we go. This was definitely about six, oh, years more than six years ago. Goodness. <laughs> so yeah, he... Very similar situation. Right. On the one instead of the two, uh, Dan snaps the ball. Dan. <laughs> runs out of the back of the... He doesn't even know he's out. He keeps running. He keeps running forever. But he's out. Safety. Uh, he then... Tweeted that he has never been happier. Freedom. 
<laughs> he's free from being the only quarterback to ever do that. Yeah, so two very infamous plays being recreated this week. Yeah, very good job this week, guys. We're really Go football! It. Yay, <laughs> football. We're back and we're doing fantastic. You know, this is just, it's a crazy season, and it's awesome. I couldn't Love be it. happier that football's back. Could not. All right, the game tonight. This is the game tonight. Cowboys, yet. Giants. Hopefully, I'd love to see the Giants win. I'd love to see a 3 0 Giants team. I've never seen it. I'm I've sure. never seen it. Never <laughs> seen it in my lifetime. They have a chance to be the first Giants in <laughs> decades. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, all they got to do is beat Cooper Rush. Eh, should, should be easy. I picked the Giants to win this, so yeah. hope for the best. So, before we sign off for today, Thursday night's game, we'll have our pick after this game's over. So, who do you got? We got the. Dolphins at the Bengals. The Bengals are rocking their new all white with their white yeah, helmets. It's gonna be sick. I am man. so excited to see it's that. Be sick. I'm should be a really good game. game. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, you know, Bengals looked good. Bengals looked good on Sunday. Um, but the uh, Dolphins. I've, I've said that if they go, if they keep winning games, they keep looking good. I'll pick them. And finally, it is with great <laughs> pride that the Dolphins can say that Austin Obriski has picked them to win week four. I'm taking the Dolphins. Good pick. I easily could see them winning the game. I mean, 4 0. They just beat the Bills. They mm-hmm. look great. For some, some no. reason, no. my heart is saying, no. <laughs> Tell me it isn't so. <laughs> For some reason, my heart is saying, Pick the Bengals. And I know that if I pick the Dolphins and the Bengals win, I'm going to be... Wait, if I pick the Dolphins and the Bengals win, yeah, I'm going to be so mad at myself. But then again, I think that the Dolphins are going to win, so if I go with my heart and pick the Bengals be still and the Dolphins heart. win, I'm going to be like, I'm an idiot. Like, of course the Dolphins were going to win. So, like, I'm really conflicted here. But, like, it's in Cincy. They're coming off a big win. They're rocking the amazing new jerseys. They're going to look awesome. I'm going to pick the Bengals. I'm going to go with my heart. Wow. I'm not going to be dumb wow. like I was last Thursday night. Going Bengals. Love it. My phone's blowing up. Maybe someone's saying that I'm an idiot for picking <laughs> the Bengals. But I got the Bengals. Hey, that's an interesting pick. Well, real quick, let's jump to uh, our statistics on, this, uh, on these weeks so far. So, Caden is 25 for 24. Aha, winning record. So he's 25 and 24, which is yeah, pretty good. Respectable. 53%. He's at 53%. Uh, correct pick rate, which is... I mean, it's better than what I'm doing. I'm currently <laughs> pulling uh, an 18 and 29 record, which is very, very bad at a 38%. But, you know... It's only seven picks if you really look at it. Right. You know, we're three weeks in, going into week four. Uh, we're bound to have some ebb and flow, so... You know, I fully anticipate that in these next coming weeks, I'm going to finally turn it around. You know, I'm going to dedicate myself a little bit. I'm going to look at some more games. I'm going to look at the statistics. Maybe look at what Vegas is saying a little bit closer. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you you know, do that. I got to turn things around. We got to take things more seriously. You know, I'm, I'm fully committing I mean, myself. I guess I could do that too. I'm only one link game above 500, so I guess I can start studying too. But if you want to participate in picking these games and give me some actual competition so it's like more fun for me because I'm going up against Austin and he's kind of like oh. trash. But if you'd like to like give me some competition to go up against, talk to me in real life or DM us on Instagram and give us your picks and I'll follow along with you because it's not very fun to do it with Austin because like oh my gosh. Let's cut back to this clip. I want, I want this clip to be cut back to the end of the year when I just beat Caden and he hasn't picked a correct game since this week. If I don't pick a correct game since I have, this week. I have stomped on him. I want to cut back to this clip right here. Yeah, exactly. All right. What was that, Debbie? Oh, that's right. We are? That's right. <laughs> this week, apparently, Debbie has just reminded me. <laughs> just informed me, actually, that we are... Gonna, I just got a word from Debbie. No, that um, <laughs> we're going to put up a poll for the end of the year punishment this week. Um, so far, it's looking like I'm going to have to do that punishment, whatever yeah. it is. I'm going to so, have to vote. <laughs> make sure you guys follow us on Instagram, ka underscore football, to go ahead and vote on that poll. Um, so you can decide what we're going to do as our punishment at the end of the year. We have a couple really, really good ideas. We're going to post that on Friday. 
So we have some we're going to post really on Friday. Ideas. Yeah. Okay. We have a couple of really good ideas. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, we hope you guys are as well. So Caden, sign us out. Yeah. So <laughs> that was really great, Caden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of K&A Football. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and you can listen to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to like to listen to our last video, click, literally just click our page and go to it. You're already on the page. It's not that hard. Just go find it. Peace. <laughs>